Now time for our final race before the lunch break. It's DD2 and DD2 Masters. It's heat number one. Let's take you through the starting grid. On pole position, it's going to be David Altleishner. Alongside him, the current championship leader in DD2, Martin Van Leeuwen, on, alongside on the front row. It's an all-British row number two with Ed Matthews and Tristan Rennie on, on that row with Bradley Barrett. Joined by DD2 Masters pole sitter Nicola Picot from sixth, fifth and sixth respectively. Jakob Bezel, not with the brother Petter this weekend because Petter has got a little baby to help look after. He's joined by Enzo Boll from the Netherlands. Lucas Pernol, who's also qualified for the Grand Finals earlier on this year over in his native land. He will have Victor Frostbay from Denmark alongside. Ilya Skaliakmanis will be on the inside of row number six, joined by Martina Stankovicius, the points leader and last year's runner-up in DD2 Masters. Maxim Didix has got a lot of dance moves to do in the next few moments of this race because he's starting from 13th, joined by uh, Matthias Lund, with Nicola Guillaume and Dennis Thum, who was uh, technically excluded for being underweight because the rear bumper came adrift of his Kach Motorsport chassis in the 577. That completes your grid ahead of 10 minutes plus an additional lap of racing. So, 10 minutes plus an additional lap of racing set to get underway. So, the drivers now will get themselves steeled and ready for racing here at Paul Fletcher International. 10 minutes on the timer plus an additional lap. So, let's see what happens, ladies and gentlemen. So titles running down to the wire. Revs rise, lights go out. First time of asking, we're underway in racing in DD2 and DD2 Masters. Up the hill they go, and it's David Outlationer leading the way. Matthew, uh, Ed Matthews has got himself up into second position ahead of Martin Van Looyen and also Bradley Barrett has made the move up to fourth place as they head up the hill through onto the Litchfield Bridge. Now down the hill into the first of the hairpins as up the inside, brazen move there. That was by Tristan Rennie as Bradley Barrett goes two wheels off of the circuit. Nearly has Nicola Picot up his inside, which does happen at the very next hairpin. Very, very fast. Gearbox action, the first time for a little while since it's been here at PF International. And up the inside, Van Leeuwen springs through on Ed Matthews through Bobby Game Corner. And now they've got Tristan Rennie at the back of this train. Nicolas Picot leading the way in DD2 Masters. In fifth overall, the Frenchman starting to move forward towards the top four as Outlationer leads after the opening lap. And all oh, Tristan Rennie went looking up the inside of Ed Matthews through Uncle Tyrone's banking on the inside. Couldn't get the job done for third position. Now relinquishes that back to fourth. And into the first hairpin. Picot now really catching them. And uh, a little bit of moving and uh, jostling up and down the order. Maxim Didix now finds himself a little bit further up the order. He's battling away with the 4-1-4 of Victor Frostbait. Nearly three abreast going into the Fullerton S's. And that just goes to show how quickly DD2 and Masters action can change. Oh, mistake there from Outlationer. Big mistake. He outbreaked himself into the Mike Wilson complex. And Martin Van Leeuwen nearly went up the inside of him to take the race lead. Now after the second lap, Van Leeuwen right in the coattails. Right on the coattails thereof of uh, David Outlationer making their way up the hill. Bradley Barrett looking for an opportunity to get through, more than likely on. I think that might have been Enzo Boll. But as they make their way down the hill, well, it was actually Jakob Bezel looking on Nicolas Picot. That's for position overall, but not for positioning because Jakob Bezel runs in DD2. 
Pico is looking for an opportunity to get through. He squeezes Edward Matthews. Oh, and they touch the two wheels in the air on the right-hand side. Pico went two wheels, high side, right-hand side of the car, bumped up and down, and that was after he squeezed Ed Matthews. Matthews came back onto the track. And yeah, it was Pico's right side wheels that went skyward. Luckily enough, the Frenchman kept a hold of it. So Pico stays in fifth at the minute. Ed Matthews drops down to seventh position. Going up to six minutes and 55 seconds still to go on the clock, plus an additional lap. This is very crucial, this first of three heats. It's about having consistency. It's about having that opportunity to keep yourself in the title push come tomorrow afternoon. 55 points for the driver that is the leader after the rankings. After these three heats, they'll be put into their respective classifications and that will showcase who's going to be at the front end and who's going to have the crosshairs on their back come tomorrow for the last finals day of the season here in 2023. Point one four, separating first and second. You know what they say? Once bitten, twice shy. David Outleister cannot make that mistake like he did earlier on, going through out of Bobby Game Corner and into the Mike Wilson complex. He needs to carry the momentum through, put the anchors on, and then rotate the cart. Not late break and hope it sticks because he nearly gave the opportunity for Van Nguyen to spring up the inside of him. Van Nguyen has made great use of Bobby Game Corner thus far in this race. Didix makes up another position. He gets through on the Greek driver, Ilias Kaliakmanis from Dams Racing. And that's a change for ninth position on the road. So five and a half minutes left to go. Van Leeuwen still keeping out Leishner in his crosshairs. Lap number five completed. Fastest lap of the race is the race leader, David Altleishner, 56.306 seconds. We head into the first hairpin, and it's not even a cart length between the pair. Altleishner looking left, looking right, trying to get through on the Polish driver in front of him. Only based out of uh, Vargoid in, in Wales. Outlaishner has been at the sharp end of the field all season long. Uh, however, at this moment, Van Leeuwen's had the number of everybody else in his pocket right about now. The 24-year-old, based out of Zolder, is really closing in. He's been coaching, the well, he was actually coaching Maxim Dirks and Nicolas Guillaume at the penultimate round of the BNL Karting Series four weeks ago at Ostricourt in France at the racing kart JPR. Tristan Rennie showing good prowess in the 474, the 18 year old from, uh, from Lonehead in the Kraft Motorsport entry. Lucas Perno said, This is going to be, uh, you know, have a little bit of fun. This is also a training exercise for who I'm going to be racing against at the grand finals. That's a very good point because sometimes that does happen. People have already qualified for Bahrain this year, and by having, you know, completing a season, not a bad thing to do. Uh, Lucas didn't, I don't think Lucas, well, Lucas was at uh, Val d'Argenton where he had a bit of a moment, a big moment, whilst he was running in the top five, and that could have really helped him towards the championship push, but unfortunately that eliminated him from it at the halfway point of the season. Three minutes 25 plus an additional lap to go. Altlation is still holding on, and he's now started to expand the gap. Brad, and now Jakob Bezel starting to close in on Tristan. Rennie dives up the inside of the banking through uh, up, uh, on Uncle Tyrone's banking and then had to lift off and relinquish it, but then he's got through. And now here comes Nicolas Picot up the inside of the 474 from the United Kingdom as Enzo Boll looks up the inside of Lucas Fano at the same hairpin and he gets through. And Enzo Boll still has the opportunity uh, to make his presence felt here this weekend in DD2 is one of the younger drivers 
that has made the transition straight from Junior Rotax into the BNL uh, into DD2. Another driver that has done that successfully this year is a teammate of his at uh, SP Motorsport, Tom Blacken, who currently leads the BNL Karting Series. Uh, Nicolas Guillaume, unfortunately, out after five laps. The uh, blue circle of doom on the timing screen screen is uh, indicated, and now he's been confirmed as a retirement from the race. So Nicolas Guillaume. Not who's currently placing 12th in the championship standings, so good showing in his uh, in, a, in a very, very competitive DD2 field this season. But with two minutes to go, there's still the opportunity for places to be made up, places to be gained, and another one. Tristan Rennie finds Enzo Boll up the inside, but the 474 counters straight away on the run down to the Fullerton S's. Boll went deep on the brakes overshot it ever so slightly and if you do that at a hairpin here at Paul Fletcher International the person behind you is going to get the crisscross and straight away get that position back 1 minute 30 seconds plus an additional lap still to go 3 laps of racing action to take us to the lunch break Altleishner leads the way overall and leading the way in DD2 Masters currently running P4 Francis Nicola Pico in the 5-1-7. And Ed Matthews' race at the moment isn't going as well as he probably would have liked, especially after that contretemps with Nicolas Picot. And Matthews now down in 10th position. And still the battle between Tristan Rennie and Enzo Bold carries on unabated through into the Fullerton S's. Lucas Panoa has got the ringside seat as they head through the right-hander at Bobby Gain corner. So two more laps remain here for the morning's action here at Paul Fletcher International for the final round of the Euro Trophy this season. Altleishner expands his lead over Van Leeuwen to just north of half a second. Enzo Boll still trying to see if he can put one past Tristan Rennie but Lucas Pano, man from Canada, looking to also strike whilst the iron is hot. And Jakob Bezel calmly holding on to third position overall. He won't worry if Nicolas Pico gets past him because that's not a battle for outright position in their respective classes as their line is turned. Rennie, Boll, Bernot through the second hairpin. Timer has expired. Last lap board of the meeting goes out very shortly and there we go the last lap board of the day of the morning is uh, being shown as Outlationer continues to lead Rennie, Boll and Pernod still squabbling over fifth as they come across the line for the final time but Outlationer has a lead of nearly nine tenths of a second over Martin van Leeuwen from the Netherlands. Jakob Bezel in third. Pico leading the way in DD2 Masters, fourth overall. As they come down from the bridge into the first hairpin for the final time. And Bezel knows, well, he's raced against Pico before in DD2. And we'll see, well, it's a DD2 Masters driver, a blooming rapid one behind me. Drivers make their way through into the Mike Wilson complex for the final time here on the conclusion of the morning's action here at Heatstay. A Paul Fletcher International checkered flag now brandished, now waves, and David Outleishner wins the opening heat for DD2. Ahead of Martin van Leeuwen, third is Jakob Bezel. Pico picks up the win in DD2 Masters. Great battle between Rennie, Boll, and Pernod to round out the top four in DD2. Victor Frost Bay. Seventh in DD2, eighth overall ahead of Maxim Didix. Dennis Toom started from the back end of the field, finishes second in DD2 Masters, and what's more, rounds out the top 10. Matthias Lund, Ilias Kaliakvanis, and Martina Stankiewicz just ran at the top 13. Bradley Barrett comes across the line, unfortunately in 14th place, so the 4 4 3 from Sodi Vitesse still making it to the checkered. Ed Matthews uh, retiring on lap nine, probably due to further technical dramas of the collision with uh, Nicolas Picot. And Nicolas Guillaume retiring on lap five.
So that concludes.